Hi, you guys. Okay, so I just said, how about I take you guys on the same journey? I am finishing up my homework for Flexbox. So this is intermediate CSS. And then I'm going to start on, I have homework to do with um, Bootstrap. So, um, but, you know, I'll just kind of go through this. This is, of course, Code Academy, And I really do... Um, I endorse, okay, Code Academy. They really help you get the concepts down um, because you take quizzes, you kind of do everything over and over again. I like it a little bit more than um, Free Code Camp. This is the pro, though, of Code Academy. I'm not sure how much it costs because my school kind of pays for that for us. So, anyways, just come along with me as I answer these questions and we learn Flexbox together. Um, there's a lot. I feel too flexbox. I've learned it in the past, but um, you know, I kind of would guess and then I'd be good. So it's really good right now for me to get a really good understanding of how positioning um the elements work. All right, so let's go ahead and start this. Huh. Okay. Assign the div element, the ID, center a justify content property. Um, well, we're going to do this one at first because I wasn't here for this one. So um, you see how they have flex start up there. So it's really good because it kind of shows you what it'll what it's going to do. So you always do display flex, and then this is for justify content and flex start. So this one's not going to move because it's going to be, it's defaulted that way anyway. All right. So we should start seeing them move now. Display flex, and then this one's going to be justify content um flex end okay so you see how that moved over to the side interesting okay um this one display flex justify Content center. Okay, okay. And then display flex justify a content space around. Oops. Okay. Perfect. And then the last one, display flex justify content space between. Oh, you see how that worked. Interesting. Okay, next. So align items. In the previous exercise, you learned how to justify the content of a flex container from left to right across the page. It is also possible to align flex items vertically within the container. The align items property makes it possible to space flex items vertically. Okay, container, align items, baseline. Yeah, I never understood this one. In the example above, the align items property is set to baseline. This means that the baseline of the content of each item will be aligned. Below are five commonly used values for the align items property. Flex start, oh, they got the same ones. Flex in, center, baseline, stretch. Stretch. If possible, the items will stretch from top to bottom of the container. This is the default value elements with a specified height 
with a specified elements with a specified height will not stretch. Elements with a minimum height or no height will stretch. Hmm. Baseline, the bottom of the content of all items will be aligned with each other. Center, the center of all elements will be positioned halfway between the top and the bottom. Flex end, flex start, we know what that is. These five values tell the elements how to behave along the cross axis, axis of the parent container. In these examples, the cross axis stretch from top to bottom of the container. We'll learn more about this in future exercise. You might be unfamiliar with the min height and min min height and max height properties, but you have used height and width before. Min height, max height, min width and max width are properties that ensure an element is at least a certain size or at most a certain size. You'll see how these become useful as you move throughout this lesson. Okay, so let's just see how it works. Assign the div element with the ID flex start. Um, align items property for flex start. Okay, so let's see. Display flex, align items, flex, start. Okay, that one didn't do anything. I think the squill. Um, display flex. Align items, flex end. Let's see what it does. Oh, hmm. I see it's moving it down like that. Okay, see, I get it now. Assign the div element with ID center and align items property with the value center display flex align items center. Let's go down and see what it looks like right now. So if I think when it does it, it's going to be right here. Yeah, so it's in the center. Yeah, okay. And then the baseline, what's that one? Assign the div, display flex, and then align. Baseline, what is this one gonna look like? Why does that look like that? Hmm. How does the behavior of these elements differ from those in other divs? Take a look at the elements under stretch at the bottom of the page. Now in left center right rule set, change the height property to min height and observe what happens to these elements. Hey, I don't see stretch here. Oh, here it goes, I guess. Change the height property to min height. Hmm. Okay. In exercise three, we learned that all flex items shrink proportionately uh, when the flex container is too small. However, if the parent container is larger than necessary, then the flex items will not stretch by default. The flex grow property allows us to specify if 
item should grow to fill a container and also which item should grow proportionally more or less than others. I'm on the side of the flex container. Okay. Flex. In the example above, the container div has the display value of flex. So it's three child divs with the position next to each other. If there is an additional space in the container div, in this case, if it's wider than 300 pixels, the flex item will grow to fill it. The center div will stretch twice as much as the side divs. For example, if there were 60 additional pixels of space, the center div would observe, absorb 30 pixels uh, and the side divs would absorb 15 pixels each. If a max width is set for an element, it will not grow larger than that, even if there's more space for it to absorb. All of the previous properties we have learned are declared on flex containers or the parent elements. This property flex grow is the first we have learned that is declared on flex items. Assign top side and top center a flex grow value of one, stretch and shrink the browser. Okay, let's see, top side. Display, Oops. and then uh oh, it's flex row. So let's see, top side. Which one is this? Oh, it's this one. Uh oh, I didn't do it right. Oh, I gotta do it to this one too. Top side, top center, flex grow, one. Why did I give that a two? I don't know. Okay. Assign middle center the flex grow value of one. Okay, middle center. Hmm. It's doing it this way, you guys. Assign bottom side of flex grow. Um, let's see, bottom side. Flex grow of one and then bottom center flex grow two. Oh, look at what it's been doing, you guys. <laughs> look at that. Okay. All right. Flex shrink. Just as the flex grow property proportionally stretches flex items, the flex shrink property 
can be used to specify which elements will shrink and in what proportions. You may have noticed in earlier exercises that flex items shrank when the flex container was too small, even though we had not declared the property. This is because the default value of flex shrink is one. However, flex items do not grow unless the flex grow property is declared because the default value of flex grow is zero. In the example above, the center div will shrink twice as much as the side divs if the container div is too small to fit in the elements within it. If the content of 60 pixels is too large for the flex container that surrounds it, the center div will shrink by 30 pixels and the outer divs will shrink by 15 pixels each. Margin are unaffected by flex grow and flex shrink. Keep in mind, minimum and maximum widths will take precedence over flex grow and flex shrink. As with flex grow, flex shrink will only be employed if it is adjusted. Assign top side and flex shrink value of two. Top side. Okay, top side. Assign middle side and flex a flex shrink. Middle side. Okay. Assign the bottom center div a flex shrink value of two. Oops, I'm supposed to give this to bottom center. Okay, flex bases. Oh my goodness, I've never heard of this one. All right, in the previous two exercises, the dimensions of the divs were determined by heights and widths set with CSS. Another way of specifying the width of a flex item is with the flex basis property. Flex basis allows us to specify the width of an item before it stretches or shrinks. In the example above, the side divs will be 100 pixels wide and the center div will be 150 pixels wide if the container div has just the right amount of space. Hmm. Plus a little extra for margins and borders. If the container div is larger, the center div will absorb twice as much space as the side divs. The same would hold true with the assigned flex shrink values of the divs above as well. Inside the grow side rule set, grow side rule set add, This one, flex spaces, 
Okay, grow side, let's see. Okay, so I get it. It's just telling us exactly how much it's going to increase. In the same rule, add flex grow value of one. Huh, see how that goes. Okay, in the growth center, you see something. Hold on, you guys. I need to go back to see exactly what will happen if I... Okay, so we did that. No. Display, I mean, uh, flex faces 60 pixels. So, okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. And so then now, hmm. Ah, so you see how it's making it so that the one and three grow, but number two is just 60 pixels. So it's controlling um, the one element out of the three by specifying um, 60 pixels. Okay. In the growth center rule, add a flex grow property with a value of three. Let me see. In the shrink side rule at a flex basis property with a value of 300 pixels. Rinks side. Okay, with a value of three hundred pixels. Okay. In the same rule, add a flex shrink. property with a value of three. And the shrink center rule add a flex shrink property with a value of two.
And the same rule at a flex basis. Property of 160 pixels. Yeah, I'm not seeing it really change, you guys, so. The shorthand flex property provides a convenient way for specifying how elements stretch and shrink. While simplifying the CSS require, the flex property allows you to declare flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases in all in one line. The flex property is different from the flex value used in the display property. In the example above, all elements with class big will grow twice as much as elements with class small. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean big items will be twice as big as small items. They'll just take up more of extra space. The CSS below declares these three properties in one line. Big, small. Oh, it's doing that. In the example above, we use flex property to declare the values for flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases. Okay. In the example above, we use the flex property to declare flex grow, flex shrink. And flex bases. In the example above, we use the flex property to declare flex grow and flex bases. Note that there is no way to set only flex shrink and flex bases using two values. So this is flex grow and this is flex bases. You cannot use flex shrink and flex bases using two values. Only flex grow and flex bases. Mm. This one is flex grow and flex shrink. And this one is flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases. I wonder why you can't do flex grow and flex bases because here they do, I mean, flex shrink and flex bases. The browser to the right has two flex containers, each with three items. In style CSS, examine the values for each of these items. Notice that the flex grow and flex bases values are set to the blue divs. Stretch the browser window to increase its width. Observe that once the top outer div reach 100 pixels wide, they begin to grow faster than the top center div. Also notice that once the bottom center div reaches 100 pixels wide, it begins to grow faster than the outer divs. Now shrink the browser window and notice that once the top center div reaches 50 pixels wide, it begins to shrink faster than the outer divs. And when the bottom outer divs reach 75 pixels, they begin to shrink faster than the center div. Oh my goodness. In top side, all three values for flex grow, flex shrink, and flex bases are assigned individually. Refactor them to be declared in on one line using the shorthand flex property. Okay, well, that will be easy because I really know what I'm doing here. Okay, top side. Ugh. Okay. So it's flex grow, flex shrink, flex bases. In the top center, all three values of flex grow, flex shrink, one, three, fifty. 
Excuse me, you guys. My goodness. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. Okay. In bottom side, all three values for flex grow, flex drink, and flex basis are assigned individually, refactor them to be declared in one line. One, two, seventy-five. I got bad allergies, you guys. Okay, two, one, a hundred. Next. All right, flex wrap. All right, bear with me, y'all. We got five more to go. Flex wrap. Sometimes we don't want our content to shrink to fit its container. Instead, we might want flex items to move to the next line when necessary. This can be declared with the flex wrap property. The flex wrap property can accept three values. Wrap, wrap reverse, no wrap. Wrap child elements of a flex container that don't fit into a row will move down to the next line. Wrap reverse, the same functionality as wrap, but the order of the rows within a flex container is reversed. For example, in a two row flex box, the first row from a wrap container will become the second. In a wrap reverse, and the second row from the wrap container will become the first in wrap reverse. No wrap prevents items from wrapping. This is the default value and is only necessary to override a wrap value set by its different CSS rule. In the above, <clears throat> in the example above, three flex items are contained by a parent flex container. The flex container is only 250 pixels wide, so the three 100 pixel wide flex items cannot fit in line. The wrap, the flex wrap wrap setting caused the third overflowing item to appear on a new line below the other two items. The flex wrap property is declared on flex containers. Inside the style CSS, inside the wrap rule set add a flex wrap property with a value of wrap. Okay, inside of the wrap. Hmm. All right, let's make sure we watch what happens. I guess this number five is going to go down to the bottom, possibly. Let's see. Yep, four and five went down there. Okay, cool. Inside the no wrap rule set, add a flex wrap property with a value of no wrap. Display flex. Flex wrap, no wrap. Let's see what happens. You see this over here. Yeah, nothing else happens. I mean, it's just going to default that way anyway. Inside the reverse, okay, add flex reverse. I mean, wrap reverse. Wrap reverse. Oh, look at that. Okay. And inside the container, add the property space around.
Okay, where is the container? So this whole thing is the container, I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay, I see. I see what's going on there. Now the elements can wrap to the next line. We might have multiple rows of flex items within the same container. In a previous exercise, we used the line items property to space flex, to space flex items from top to the bottom of the flex container. Um, align items is for aligning elements within a single row. If a flex container has multiple rows of content, we can use align content to space the rows from top to bottom. Below are some of the more commonly used align content values. And y'all, this is a lot of information. I mean, there's so many different children and parents and, you know, different things that you can do. Um, these look the same though. Flex start, flex end, align content, and align items. So in the example above, there are four flex items inside of a flex container. The flex items are set to be 150 pixels wide each, but the parent container is only 400 pixels wide. This means that no more than two elements can be displayed in line. The other two elements will wrap to the next line and there will be two rows of divs inside the flex container. The align content property is set to the value of space around, which means the two rows of the divs will evenly will be evenly spaced from top to bottom of the parent container, which equals space before the first row after the second with double space between the rows. Below, we will see each of the properties in action. Thank goodness, because sometimes reading that stuff is okay, but it's like, I gotta do it to see. Inside the flex start. Okay. Add and align content with flex start. Okay, we see how this is looking. Let's run it and see. Mm -mm. To position the rows of elements at the top of the parent container. Oh, okay. Wait, let me get that again. Oh. Hmm. All right, and Celsius so says inside the flex in rule set, add an align content property. Okay, flex in. So let's see how this goes. What do you guys think that this is going to do here? Which to position the rows of the elements at the bottom of the parent container. So I just moved it down. All right, center. In style CSS inside the center container, I'm not even going to lie. This is a little confusing. It's starting to be so much information that it's all getting convoluted here. <laughs> okay, center. What do you think is going to happen? Let's look. Okay, I see it's kind of doing the same thing that that other one did. I can't re even remember which one, but this one is putting it in the center going um. 
horizontally. Install CSS inside the between. This will be interesting to see what this one does. Space between. I think it's going to evenly put the spaces in between. Instead of being so far apart, each one of them are going to have the same amount of space in between. No. Oh, it it made them be further apart. Let me look. Yeah. Space around now. Space around looks like it did the same thing as space in between, to be honest with you. Okay, and inside of the left, center, and right. Change it to min height. Hmm. All right, flex direction. Up to this point, we've only covered flex items that stretch and shrink horizontally and wrap vertically. As previously stated, flex containers have two axes, a main axis and a cross axis. By default, the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. The main axis is used to position flex items with the following properties. Justify content, flex wrap, flex grow, flex shrink. Now, the cross axis is used to position flex items with the following properties. Align items, align content, the main axis, and cross axis are interchangeable. We can switch them using the flex direction property, if we add the flex direction property and give it a value of column, the flex items will be ordered vertically, not horizontally. Now this is important and this is where I run into this a lot. And as a developer, you probably will um, because for navigation bars, I mean, if you're not using Bootstrap, you are doing this yourself. And so you want to, you know, make the nav bar be either horizontal or vertical. So in the exa example above, the five divs will be positioned in a vertical column. All of these divs could fit in one horizontal row. However, the column value tells the browser to stack the divs one on top of the other. As explained above, properties like justify content will not behave the way they did in previous examples. The flex direction property can accept four values, row, row reverse, column, column reverse. The flex direction property is declared on flex containers. In the row rule set, add a flex direction property with a value of row. Flex direction row. Okay, let's see what it do, y'all. Mm, absolutely nothing because it's already a row. All right, maybe the next one it'll do something. Row reverse. Okay, the next one, if it's row reverse, it should make one be where five is. Is that what it'll do? Let's see. Yep, exactly what it did. Okay, this is kind of like the um, flex 
rapping situation in the rap reverse, but it's a little different. Inside the column rule set, add a flex direction. Oh, column. All right, so let's see what it looks like now. Oh, I love it. Let's see that change into a column then. Absolutely, I love it. All right, so if we do this one now, it should change into a column, but five will be up here. It'll go five, four, three, two, one, all the way down. It should, right? Yes, sir, Bob. Now, this one is really helpful. I like this. Okay, so change the height property of the container to max height and see what happens. Everything kind of shrunk. You see that? This whole thing is in this container. Inside of the container, do um, align items center. Oh, look at that. Everything is centered. Okay. Inside the container rule set, add a justify content property with a value of space around. So everything's gonna have space around it. Let's see what this looks like. Hmm, doesn't look too much different. Inside the box content, a rule set, add a flex grow. Hmm. Flex grow one. Okay, so in the box, what is a what's the box? Let's make sure we understand what where the box class is. Box. Where is that? So we know what it's doing. Oh, okay. So all of these boxes, um, like one, two, three, four, five. Since we did this it's going to, they're going to grow. So let's see what happens. Okay. Next. Flex flow. I have never heard of this one either, you guys. Like the shorthand flex property, the shorthand flex flow Oh, property is used to declare both the flex wrap and the flex direction properties in one line. In the example above, we take two lines to accomplish what can be done in one. So display flex, flex wrap, flex direction, wrap column. Okay. In the example above, the first value is flex flow. And then uh, the declaration is flex direction and flex wrap value. All values for flex direction and flex wrap are accepted. In the row reverse rule set, set the flex flow property. Uh, to have a direction of row reverse and wrap. Mm. On the row reverse. Okay. Flex. Low. Row. 
reverse wrap. Okay, let's look at row reverse right now. Where is it? All right, here it goes. All right, didn't do anything. That's because it's already like that. All right, in the column rule set, set the flex flow property to give elements a direction of column and wrap element to wrap element. Mm. Okay, let's see this one then. This is the column. So, okay, let's see. If it does anything. Oh, I do see row reverse did something. Uh, column, okay, column changed. All right, nested flex boxes. So far we've had multiple flex containers on the same page to explore flex item positioning. It is also possible to position flex containers inside of one another. Huh. Now this is interesting. Let's let's get eyes on this. Okay, so this container has a class of left image small. That's a div. Okay, so the container has a div flex. Hmm. All right, in the example above, a div with three smaller images will display from top to bottom on the left of the page. There is also a div with one large image that will display on the right side of the page. The left div has a smaller flex basis, but stretches to fill more extra space. The right div has a larger flex basis, but stretches to fill less extra space. Both divs are flex items and flex containers. The items have properties that dictate how they will be positioned in the parent container and how their flex item children will be positioned in them. Inside the main rule set, add a display property with a value of flex. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, when you just do display flex, it makes it be two columns if there's two different divs. And that is easy enough if you're just trying to, um, you know, cut your page into two different sections and columns next to each other side by side. It's all you really have to do. So easy. All right. Inside the main rule set, add on the line items property with a value of center. Okay, inside the main rule set, do justify content. Space around, let's see. Okay, inside the container rule set, add a display property with a value of flex. Hmm. Okay, inside the container rules that out of flex direction. Just... 
column. Hmm, fixed it. Inside the container rule set, add justify content. Center. Okay. Inside the container rule set, add an align items. Center. Wow, oh, look at that. Okay. Repeat steps four, six, and seven for the child rule set. Uh. Justify content center, align items center. Oh, I need this on there, don't I? All right. We're done, you guys. Review, Flexbox. You should be proud of yourself. You have learned the most important properties of Flexbox. Flexbox is an art and a science. You can use it to make laying out multiple elements of a piece of cake. You know everything necessary to begin using it on your own projects. Display flex, display inline flex, justify content, align items, flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis, flex. Flex wrap, align content, flex direction, flex flow. You guys, we're done. Uh-oh, all of the images are inside of three column divs. They're making us do stuff on the 15th. And a three inside of one. Inside cards rule set. Inside the cards... Rule set, wherever it is. Okay. Add display flex. Expertise section. Let's see what it did, you guys. Look at that. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Now, inside the card rule set, set the flex wrap property to have a value of wrap. Okay. That looks neater, right? Inside the card rule set, Add justify content space around. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm getting it. Inside of the column rule set, display flex. Now let's see the columns. It's going to do that thing again. 
Let's see. Yeah, I did it again. Um, oh, do inline flex, it says. Yeah, which is basically the same thing again. Um, in the column rule set, do flex direction column. Going to be back being a column. Okay. And then in the column rule set, do justify content space between. Okay, that's it, you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed that session. I love Code Academy; they really reinforce um, what they've just taught you. Um, as you can see, next is a Flexbox to do app. So we're definitely not finished with Flexbox. With Code Academy, they take you through um, various uh, other lessons about the same thing, just teaching you um, how to do it in a different way. So I definitely love that. If you haven't had a chance, please check out Flex, I mean, um, Code Academy Pro. It's really worth the money. And after I finish this school, um, which is in July, you guys, I can't believe it. Um, I... I'm going to buy it myself, you know, because after that developer job, you still need to, you know, up your skills and make sure that you stay um, knowledgeable about the new, any new languages coming out and things like that. All right. Well, I hope you have a great night and that concludes this video. All right. Bye-bye, you guys.